recording him. Gets through with his if he gets through with his part of the agenda, okay. then, uh, we can go from there. So let's see, at this point we have one, two, three, four. Five, six. So we do have a quorum. Okay. So let's uh, call the meeting to order, and we'll just work our way around. And as the as the the agenda says, you know, I'm going to reserve the right to change the order of the of the agenda. So why don't we start with uh, the pledge? John Crespo, why don't you lead us in the pledge? Um, I, one second, please. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, for which one stands, one nation, one nation under, under God. God indivisible uh, with liberty justice. and justice for all. for all all right well thank you Here. okay and I, I'm, I'm guessing that uh telesco's here so they'll do the roll call and as people do come into the meeting that you'll you'll you know, make note of that. So why don't we start with the uh, application review, John? So I'll turn the meeting over to you. Uh, oops, thank you, John. Yeah, we had uh, we had uh, three items on the agenda this 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 month. Uh, I'm not sure if um, Mr. Hiltz is here. He was uh, at one of the applications, but uh, the first one involves just a discussion that we wanted to have regarding some of the mooring fields. Uh, uh, I have no problem, certainly, with moving forward with the uh, applications as they stand, that is the Sprite Island Yacht Club and Norwalk Yacht Club, but there were some issues that were uh, brought up by the Shellfish Commission regarding uh, regarding uh, the access, the accessibility of certain areas that are natural shellfish beds uh, with the with regard to the mooring holders. And uh, the, the uh, DEP was putting forward some suggestions as to uh, some possibilities of how we might make some sort of arrangement. And I know, for example, uh, Sprite Island already removes all of the moorings during the off season to allow uh, certainly access to, to those fields uh, by, by the shell fishermen. And I know, and I was hoping that Steve would be here, Steve uh, 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 Bartish uh, with, you know, from the Shellfish Commission to discuss some of the issues that, that I think uh, might be facing with regard to uh, harvesting of the shellfish in different seasons, et cetera. They know certainly more about that than I do. Because all, all the natural shellfish beds are not created equal. There's certainly uh, uh, some that are, that are a little bit more prolific than others. But, uh, but nonetheless, what the uh, DEP was putting forward with uh, as future uh, uh, wish list, so to speak, is that the uh, shell fishermen and the mooring holders get together and come up with some sort of idea to triage different areas of the mooring fields. If they don't remove the mooring, uh, the moorings completely, that perhaps they can uh, segregate uh, several sections of, of the mooring fields to sort of triage, let's say one year that one group would, would have the uh, moorings removed completely uh, and allow for, I guess, mooring inspections along with allowing the shell fishermen to, to harvest a certain area and then the following year, another area would be uh, would be removed. That is, if they don't remove or want to, as I said, keep in place uh, moorings during during the course of the course of the off season. So uh, that was part of the discussion. If anyone has any uh, other item that we would like to add to that, well, John, I'd like to weigh in somewhat because we did approve one of one of the applications, and I. That could have been row eight yacht club or yes that we're gonna we're gonna have to grandfather that and and wait for perhaps uh uh sort of a, an agreement perhaps that that they might come up with with regard to the shell fishermen and the uh uh the mooring holders that that's certainly gonna happen. Well, i don't i don't I, I don't personally again this is just my opinion i don't i don't entirely agree and i'll tell you why because when that application was presented they presented it as well, we're going to remove them anyway. That's point number one. Mm -hmm. And point number two, we were never told that there were agreements in place 
with the shellfish bed owners, lessors, or the like. We, we were not informed of that at all. And also that there were in existence agreements with the shellfish people that they had, um, there were restrictions to their, their keeping moorings on those beds. And then it, as it comes out, even though if you take in the overlays and because we were concerned about that as well, or correct me if I'm wrong anytime, John, that there, there, there wasn't any moorings claimed that were on the shellfish beds. But then again, for the shell fishermen to an effect job, they, they need the maneuverability and they need all the moorings in that area removed. Not just ones that are exactly over the beds that uh, been a harvest or, or work on. Well, they, need, they need maneuverability. So I, I, I think that, you know, we were not given the whole ramifications of the exist of the, what was existing. And we looked at it as there was no harm, no foul. And yet we, we weren't aware of the, the other items in that list that should have been addressed. So, so may, may I add some clarity, right. gentlemen? Sure. Joe, yeah. Sure, yeah. So, so um, I Joe, think- you want to make, a, uh, you're going to re represent yourself from race, correct? correct? Yes, Joe, Joe Petropalo from uh, Race School Center. Sorry about that. Um, so, so I think that there are some uh, confusions between the, the natural beds and the leased beds. Um, so, and, and we discussed this a little bit at our, our last meeting and I had, I had updated the drawings for you all, mm -hmm. um, but for all uh, three, if the, the moorings are over the leased beds, the mooring fields need to get permission from the leases in order to keep the moorings. That's, that, that's there. correct. And there was no, no issue with that. But as I said, right. there, there was a discussion, I, I think, at the Selfish Commission uh, that, uh, that some of the shellfishermen wanted access to the natural beds. Right. And, and so, so, so that's what we're talking about is, is with right. the, the natural right. beds. Right. Um, not, 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 not the, not the, you know, the, uh, right. the, right. Beds, not, but, not the least, the least right. beds. Um, the, the intention is to still take those moorings out, right. uh, you know, if, if, if they have permission to be there, um, uh, during, during the off season. Right. There's uh, no, no issue with that. That's correct. Right. Right. And, and so, so the discussion we're having and it, it's, uh, more relevant is to 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 Norwalk um, because the, the Sprite Island Yacht Club um, those moorings are are all lease beds with the with the Norwalk it's it's the it, the moorings over the natural beds um, and this is very similar to the uh, Rowayton Yacht Club right. um, we we were requesting to leave have the ability to leave those in um, at, annually. Um, so I just wanted to add that clarification. Uh, that, that's 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 correct. And as I said, since that was already passed, and I guess the do the DEP has uh, given you know giving them their permit, that that's certainly uh, grandfathered, if you will, from that standpoint. But they were talking about the DEP was then talking about, and I don't like to isolate the Nog Yacht Club because they're certainly next in line with regard to their uh, you know their moorings over the over the natural beds. But there was a proposal that was that was discussed by the by the DEP to sort of triage different areas so that it made it uh, 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 a, on a rotating basis that that not all of the uh, moorings would have to be removed over the natural beds, but only certain areas that perhaps wanted to, the shellfishermen wanted to harvest at a particular time, and that an agreement could be worked out between the shellfishermen which areas would be harvested at one particular time and it would be those moorings that would be removed uh during during that season and at the same time there would be an inspection of the tackle etc that that would go along go along with that to sort of cover both the both bases uh this proposal is apparently in place in southport harbor where uh they they've developed uh, uh quadrants of of uh, of their mooring fields as some of the, some of the, the boat clubs so that uh, certain that air, that one quadrant is removed, the tackle is, uh, is inspected, and the shellfish human can go in there in that particular area and do what they need to do. But as I understand from the shellfish people, and I was hoping that that 
Steve Bartish will be here, that all the shellfish, natural shellfish beds are not created equal, so to speak, and that there's a difference in the harvesting of clams and differencing of harvesting of oysters. So this is beyond my, my capability of, of, of distinguishing you know, what areas are, are best to harvest at one particular point in time. So that's not what, what our, uh, our, our purview is right now, but really to discuss the option of, uh, of uh, going along with that idea of perhaps having an agreement between shellfish beds, uh, 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 the uh, shell fishermen and the, uh, the people who lease moorings or have moorings over the natural beds as to come up to some sort of workable agreement, not that we would put that together, but that would be with the, between a shell fisherman and the, um, uh, and, and the uh, uh, mooring, uh, mooring fields. Are there, are there natural beds in question in, in Wilson Cove? Or are we just talking about over by Sprite right, Island? Okay. You know, right, right now, it right now, there are. Be, yeah, it right now would be uh, primarily the, um, uh, you know, Noak Yacht Club, yeah, and and uh, also, well, in this case here, since it's been grandfathered, in the area of the Rowayton Yacht Club. Right. And over natural beds. We approve both, we approve both those applications, right? Basically, yes. It's not a matter of whether you're not going to approve it or not approve it. That, that's fine. It's just a matter of having. I was trying to. I was trying to figure out what you meant by grandfathering. Yeah. Well, no. But, so, well, we've approved that already. We've approved the Rowayton Yacht Club, and we so only we approved Rowayton Yacht Club, Chris, right. and that's the one uh, John is referring to grandfathering. We did not approve Norwalk Yacht Club, even though it was the exact same. With that table, language. okay. All right. All right. And, and I didn't want to make it sound as though that we're isolating the Nauk Yacht Club in, in, a, in a particular fashion. It's not the case because in the future and moving forward, eventually this is what the, the well, I should say the deep is perhaps proposing, uh, at least talking to Sue Bailey, that this was uh, sort of on the, on the horizon of what we, and whether we would support something of that, of that nature uh, instead of having a, a gentleman's agreement. Uh, to work with the, the shellfish and the and the mooring holders would have some sort of an agreement on removing the moorings at designated times over the natural bed so that so that certain areas can be uh, can be worked at, at an appropriate time. That's 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 all we were planning to do this evening. May I say something? I'm actually Beth Kenny, not Jill. I was wondering why I see I see too many uh, there's too many Jills, and I think we had several Catherines here too as well. <laughs> um, I my name is Beth Kinney and I'm a Norwalk resident and also um, Vice Commodore of Norwalk Yacht Club. And I wanted to clarify based on my conversations with Deep that whatever agreement is reached with Norwalk Yacht Club will also be put into effect immediately with Rowayton Yacht Club. They have the right to do that and they said they have to treat everything consistently. So um, I think it's important to understand that, that I, I do not feel, um, uh, singled out because whatever happens to Norwalk is also going to be the same for Row Aiton. Oh, that's correct. We, that's, that's it correct. is a completely, you know, we are we work very closely together in the morning field, um, and it, it, I have the wording that had been sent by um, that was passed back and forth with Deep to um, Jill. Help me with the name, um, the consultant. Oh. Um, to uh, with with um, Jeff Stedman. Jeff Stedman, uh -huh. um, and it the wording was specifically to allow licensed sh shell fishermen and seed oystermen access to shellfish resources on their natural beds within the mooring field. The licensee shall institute a mooring inspection and maintenance program by dividing the mooring field in the natural bed area into quadrants. One co quadrant per year shall be inspected and maintained. When the moorings in each quadrant are inspected and maintained, such quadrants shall remain free of moorings for a 60-day period during the off-season to allow access to shellfish resources. And we will notify um, the Norwalk Harbor Commission what no, the no, 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 shellfish commission. Norwalk. Actually, what Deep said was Norwalk. Harbor Commission, because you actually are the ones that. Oh, we do authorize, but but they yeah. were. She, uh, Sue Bailey had sent sent her on. I I, I appreciate what you're, you're telling me, Beth, and that is that the uh, uh, the original comment I I believe from Sue Bailey was point that the lic uh, licensee shall inform the Norwalk Shellfish Commission of the coordinates of the quadrant that is available for access to shellfish. Uh, you okay. may have something. There might be something. You know, may other wording. I said. Um... What I saw is said we, we, we do we we, we don't we, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Both of you will know. Right. Okay. 
it is the idea. And it would be over the natural, the, the areas that are not over any shellfish, we would, um, you know, are, are not part of this, I think. But. Well, that's, that, that's, as I said, that's, that's, that's basically what we're perhaps here to discuss this evening, whether we agree with the concept, let's put it that way, of moving forward. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I see nothing wrong with a gentleman's agreement, not making it mandated, but, but having some sort of agreement between parties to make it equitable for everyone uh, involved. Does anybody have any additional comments or concerns or questions? Just, or? Uh, just I just want to clarify, I have no objections to what ultimately will happen regardless. It's just that my objection is to the fact that we weren't aware of existing agreements mm. when we when we passed that uh, resolution. I, I realize that, John. I know. There's, <laughs> but John, you know, can this I? After the fact, Lori. Yes. Um, yeah, I just want to add because I actually went back and and today and uh, to our September meeting when we talked about the Row Eight and Yacht Club and Norman Norm Edwards did mention Steve Bloom's beds and said that, um, that Row 8 and Yacht Club does not use those, but Steve permits individual homeowners, I guess it must be on Belle Island to drop moorings there because the, what Norm said was that Steve didn't think it was fair for a, a waterfront homeowner with a dock to not have a mooring. And then he also mentioned another name, Hillier, I think. Is Bull? the name, pardon me? Hilliard Bull. Yeah, exactly. So, and that Row 8 and Yacht Club did have moorings in that leased shellfish bed. So my, from my understanding, what I listened to today from our meeting in September is that Norm Edwards did specifically mention those sh leased shellfish beds. Yeah, but my recollection was that Norm also said that during his natural course of business, he took all the moorings out regardless. That was correct. His exact statement that right. So this became a, like a, a non contention because we do have to remove them anyway. So that's and then again, not being aware of the, the least bed situations and the, the existing deals, whether they were written or or tacit approval just by letting things happen and with communication, that's all well and good. It's just that we should have been aware of that when we were putting our comments together. John, I thought we, you know, well, I might be wrong, but I thought that was really a, uh, an issue that we were certainly aware of that, that uh, over the leased beds, the moorings would be removed. And that was the agreement between the shell fishermen and the and the, and the mooring. The mooring. Well, we became aware of that afterwards. That that when the, the application was submitted, that wasn't part of, and we didn't know, and we didn't weigh in on that. Are you talking or, about the Rowayton? You're talking about the Rowayton Yacht Club. Rowayton, and we yeah. didn't have anything to comment on because we were also told that it's just that it had to do with expediency because there were so many moorings that had to come out that they couldn't meet a, a certain deadline and this gave them the ability to extend it over another 30, 60 days to, to, to get their uh, the stuff out. So I, that, I didn't have any issues or problems with it. I, and, I, and, I, and I don't have any today, other than the fact that we weren't aware of existing agreements. All right, well, well, well now we are, but the issue now is uh, what do we do about moorings over the natural beds? And that's what, that was, that's what was a concern. Basically, you know how 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 would they would work that? Because harvesting is not done over at all times over all the natural shellfish beds all the time. And it, as I said, if it if it if it works out where a shell fisherman wants to have access to this particular area of the natural bed, that you should have access to it during a particular time, and that would come up to some sort of an agreement between, the, for for example, a, a section of mooring holders in that in the off season of the natural bed area. Yeah, it's been my understanding that that a lot of the natural bed product that, that they do to take out from time to time, mm -hmm. they they seed it into public waters. For, right, they, that, that's correct. That's what norm. That's what they do. They take that right. they take those clams and put them in, you know, over accessible for for seeding. That's correct. 
Correct. So, I mean, to me, that's, again, it's another community benefit for them to do oh, that. There, there's, there's no question about it. Uh, but again, like I pointed out, and I think some of the shellfish have also pointed out that not all of the harvesting natural beds are again, equal with regard to the extent of growth of an oyster versus a, versus a uh, mercenary mercenary. You know, how the quick does that take place, the water flow temperature? There's a lot of yeah, variables. Yeah. So, so so what areas get harvested or harvested or, or best to be harvested? I, I I don't know. I don't think that's our part of our discussion. Uh, uh, so John yeah. Pinto, can yeah. I ask you a question? This is a clarification for Jill and Beth. It's my understanding that no moorings should be allowed in leased beds without specific permission from the lease owner. That's correct. And in terms of, and again, I'm just learning all this, but, and then the natural beds, as in the past, the moorings come out. They're not in there year round. And what the yacht clubs, Rowayton and Norwalk are asking for is re regarding the bed, the, the moorings that exist where there are no shellfish beds. And those are the ones, am, am I right on this? That's those correct. are the ones that they're asking for permission. So there are no shellfish beds. And not permission, but an agreement that those, that that the moorings in those areas at certain times be removed. That's all. No, you can leave or, those or that they can stay in year or they round. Can or they can stay in. But that would yeah. be an agreement that worked out. And that's what I pointed out. And that was what I mentioned right. that, that certain areas really don't need to be harvested because apparently they don't uh, uh they don't spawn that fast or you, you might not have, and that's up to what, the shellfishmen to figure out I, I i don't i don't know what that is but do we have a map that defines where the natural shellfish beds are is that magic 100 year old map or is it, it it's well that that map is still in existence and, and we do have a copy of not the original one of the 18 i think it's 1882 but right. you have one that's later a later version of that 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 mentions that Yes. So, so Rowayton and 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 Norwalk Yacht Club have moorings over natural beds. What we, if I may, yes, um, what what both Rowayton and I, and it's been kind of alluded to, we're looking for really, um, is that it becomes very uh, currently. It says October thirty first. We have to have them all out, all the moorings out. And we can't start putting them back in again until April 15th over the entire mooring field, um, the natural beds, as well as the area where um, there are no natural beds and nothing, no oystering is done at all. And well, that's about a third of our mooring the field. The entire, entire NOC area is, is considered a natural shellfish resource. There isn't, there, I don't think there's an area in NOC that is not considered no natural, having no natural beds. That's according to the Shellfish Commission. And there's part, part of it is restricted from shell fishing in the cove. You can't shellfish in inner Wilson Cove because it, the water quality isn't where it needs to be. Well, what the shellfishermen do, they oftentimes remove clams from that area, bring them out, let them cleanse themselves, and so so. And, and that's what they do in one portion of it. <clears throat> right, they can harvest. They can certainly harvest. Yeah. It's not that the portion that they're not allowed to at all. Well, that goes to my question: is is it is there a map that shows what the natural shellfish beds, or is everything assumed to be a natural shellfish bed? Every, every, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, not concerned, as far as I know, that entire Nauk area is considered a natural shellfish bed for a resource. That's correct. And, and uh, what, Dr. What, what the productivity is of each one of those beds is I'm not sure. Well, that, that but that's sort of irrelevant to the conversation. I mean, either it is either it's allowed or it's not allowed. It, it exists or it doesn't exist. No, the natural, it's a natural shellfish bed. It, it might serve as a resource. Every, everything is a natural shellfish bed. Exactly. Everything so, that's wet. So it's, but whether, whether they're actually clams or, or oysters or, or, or hard shell clams in that area and whether they're accessible and, and harvestable, I don't know. That, that I don't know. I, I believe, may I speak yeah. again? Sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that there are delineated natural shellfish beds, which Jill provided as requested a, an overlay of the natural beds yeah. as well as the um, leased beds as well as our borders to be able to differentiate between the natural beds, the leased beds and, and our borders and Rowayton. So there are three different levels. 
um, what I started to say before, and I'm not sure I completed, was what we're really what we really need is a month on either end. Um, and as as has been mentioned, the these areas are used primarily for seating. They come in for really, you know, a limited period of time and then leave again. So, um, you know, I think that this, the proposal of DEEP has worked in, you know, in Fairfield and I think it might, I, I think it probably could work here. Um, and, um, one of the things that was made clear to me by Deep is in the case of Row 8 and Yacht Club or in the case of us, if they change their mind, they can change the permit. Mm -hmm. um, so if something happens, the permit can be changed and Row 8 will be changed once the decision, oh. unless, it, unless we leave this the way it is. And both of ours are going to match each other. So um, anyway, that's... Well, that, that, that's all the discussion about this is all. That's all this discussion is all about. I don't want to belabor, you know, any any of the points that were that were made. Uh, okay. I think I think they're certainly well taken. Uh, the issue here is whether the uh, the uh, Carbon Management Commission agrees in principle with uh, DEP uh, having some sort of uh, triage uh, policy of of uh, of allowing certain areas to to be harvested during during a various and on a sort of a rotating basis and then over the natural beds we're not talking about the least but over the natural beds uh where the where it becomes equitable for the shell fishermen and certainly the uh the, the mooring holders that that's that's all that's all we want to uh, uh to, to bring out well for for explaining impl impl implement um implications how does that affect the, the, the mooring fields that the, the that we manage that, that the harbor management can manages in norwalk harbor because we don't we don't require those moorings to be removed. They're not. Rem I mean, some of them are removed, some of them are not removed. But there's no mass removal of moorings in Norwalk Harbor, correct? Uh, that that um, that that's correct. That, we, that's we correct. Don't. So th these rules that we're we're creating affects Norwalk Harbor and the, the fields that we manage, not just the privately managed fields. I believe so. That would that would again to make it equitable for everybody to be concerned with everything. That's correct. Right. So are we are we okay with that? Or, I mean, because they're privately they're privately owned and managed, and then the ground is leased. So we're gonna we're gonna be requiring our people who lease moorings from you know the mooring rights from us to remove their moorings every four years. Well, I, I would I would think that if if a shell fisherman would like to come into that area, if they so well, that's not the question. The question is, you know, you're going to make quadrants, so you're going to say in this quadrant they have to be removed. It would probably be up to let's say some sort of an agreement between the mooring holder and the and the uh, and the shell fisherman. If if that no, the, you're saying what we're saying is that natural beds, this quadrant of the national natural bed will be vacated every four years, and that. Any fish fisherman could go in there, and any licensed whatever fisherman could go in there and use it. They're not going to call up and say, "Who has this mooring here in the East I, Basin? I need to. I want to go in there." And... I I don't know if the DEP has has fine tuned it to that extent, Chris. I don't. I well, don't. I'm, I'm, we're, we're making up. A, we're, we're 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 implementing all these rules that affect the yacht clubs, but they would also affect the the, the mooring fields that we manage as well. And if we're going to explore the, the implications of this. Um, I think we we have we want to make it fair for everybody. We have to explore maybe, implications maybe, for everybody. Maybe, and, maybe when the DEP comes up with a more definitive language uh, to, to to for us to review and discuss, then maybe we can certainly bring that bring that point up. But you're absolutely correct. That would that would have to involve everyone, not just. Or we have to define what the natural beds that, that want to be used are. Oh, well, that's that that that's correct. And I don't have and that. Then, I don't have that uh, that knowledge to say. Yeah, that that seems that seems to come up in every meeting whether something is or isn't a, a shellfish bed and we keep getting referred to well we're, we're gonna have to confer to the shellfish commission to to sort of come up with some sort of uh uh rationale to, to what 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 would be needed to, to do but the whole thing here the point here was was whether we would agree in concept of of something like that moving forward and that i'm sure in the future that we would have to review the language if the language gets put down on, on paper, not just I know I know Beth Kenny had, had mentioned that that uh, either uh, uh, Sue Sue Bailey had sent information to her. I've also received some information from Sue as well on, on the same 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 verbiage, you know, basically. Uh, and uh, but I don't think that's finalized. Uh, 
And I think what Sue was requesting is that during after our la after this meeting, that we uh, either agree or disagree or uh, uh, have them come up with some sort of proposal that we would then review and uh, look at to see whether it's uh, uh, amenable to, to all the parties concerned. Well, without knowing where this applies, it's hard to say what the implications are. Well, I think we'll just have to wait to see what uh, what Deep Deep certainly comes up with as far as that's concerned. We can either yay, nay, or either agree with it or disagree with it. All right, well, I don't, I, I don't know. Does anybody have any other issues on that? I, I'd like to either move forward or... Uh, Either, uh... John, I have one. I have one more question on it. Um, what is so? If what the yacht clubs are asking is for an extension beyond October thirty first, so Beth mm -hmm. mentioned a month to get the moorings out, mm -hmm. and to be able to put them in a month earlier than April, whatever. What is the hardship of that on the shell fishermen? Uh, that that that's a question, Laurie. I, I can't answer. That's what I was hoping that that Steve or someone from the Shell Fishing Mission would have been here. Because it would seem that that could be a straightforward thumbs up, thumbs down. Mm -hmm. It seems that the what Chris is bringing up with the quadrants and the, you know, I mean, with with managing that throughout the entire Norwalk uh, mooring fields entirely is a much longer conversation. Oh, I I I I believe that's that's correct. Yes. Yeah, and I, as I said, I I'm just going about what Sue Bailey had had mentioned in brief, and uh, what was tossed around at the Shellfish Commission uh, last week, right? Based on what the shell what the shellfish comments were, as far as having access uh, to the natu natural beds, and this is what prompted, I guess, Sue to uh, put some some uh, uh, brief language together. Whether it's correct or not, whether we agree with it or not, that's a that's a whole other that's a whole other issue. But it's it's certainly moving in the right direction. That I, I basically see no no problem with that. But I'm certain there's a lot of uh, uh, tweaking to do with regard to the language and where uh, uh, who's who's responsible is not responsible. To think, you know, I have to wait for the for the DEP to perhaps put something together and then have it and run it by us to review that. All right. Well, if there's no further comment. Um, you know, we can move forward. Uh, if everyone's in agreement with perhaps uh, uh, giving the DEP a, a nod to say, okay, go ahead, put some put some language together with regard to that 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 uh, 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 sort of triaging uh, over the various natural shellfish beds and having a gentleman's agreement between the mooring holders and the shell fishermen on some sort of rotating basis. Uh, uh, see what see what they put together. See what they come up with. That's 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 all I can say right now because that's all I. I've already told you more than I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so John, I, I, Dr. Pinto, that is, uh, I would think that who, who's going to manage the rotation? That's, that's, so, that's, that's, that's the other, that's the other issue too, Jeff. There's, and, a, lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot of perhaps uh, tweaking that has to be done before we yeah. know exactly precisely how, how this is going to be implemented or how that would take place. You know, I mean, this this was sort of just, um, and I would have to confer to perhaps the people in Southport and see how what language they put together and how they how that's working. Right, as you stated, that you know, all shell shellfish beds aren't created equal. Right, that, that's correct. Maybe uh, maybe uh, one area uh, can get harvested or or seeded every year, while others take three years. So yeah, well, that, that's correct. I, you know, so, I can't answer that question. I know, yeah. I know there's a different uh, seating ability and uh, mm -hmm. with regard from an oyster to a, to the mercenary, mercenary, the hard clam, hard shell clam. So, so I'm not a shell fisherman. I don't, I don't know that. And as, as, as I said, there's a lot of uh, not, uh, information that has to come forward to before this is, at least as far as I'm concerned, can be solidified. Can I share my screen for a minute? I'm just gonna show you the state aquaculture um, um, map. Michelle, okay. And right, right. So, you know, the red is prohibited. There's a key down in the lower part, but basically the red is prohibited. So here's, here's Wilson Cove, for example. Um, 
Village Creek in, in, in Sheffield Harbor, the upper part is prohibited. And then the upper part of Norwalk Harbor and Charles Creek is prohibited. But other areas, part, you know, our southern, our right. southern um, Anchorage area, Sprite Island is on this town line. That's over where? That's over here somewhere. Yeah. Right um, there. I think it's even further over because it's on the it's on the town line with Westport. Um, yeah, I can't quite see it. But no, anyway, right. yeah, it's right. It's, yeah. Um, can't talk talk shorts. Okay, here's, here. here's, here's here's the town line. Is the blue yeah. line? So here's, you know, so these are yeah. Sprite Island's almost surrounded by lease beds, whereas in um. That, that's correct. And we're talking natural beds over in the other direction. Right. But the, nat the, the, the ones with the numbers are the least beds, the ones without numbers that are. That's correct. You know, these, it's, it's seasonally conditional or conditional. Or there's various definitions right. of these. Right. Um, so, that, you know, I, you know, this is one guide to what's what's a shelf, what's allowed to be a shellfish bed. I don't know if they're allowed to do anything in prohibited areas. Well, um, Chris, I don't want to micromanage this tonight. I don't, I don't think we. Well, you know, I th I, well, I think we had. To, I think it's good to know who's affected, and who's not affected, what's affected, and what's not affected. Um, well, as far as I as far as I know, it, the, the the affected would be over a na over the natural shellfish beds, basically, not the lease beds, because agreements have been put in place. Right. For, but, for the lease beds. I think it's important to know whether prohibited areas are considered shellfish beds or not. Well, as far as I believe that the prohibited areas can be harvested, but they can't go to market. Uh, they would have to be removed. Air, it's certain, uh, I guess the, the, the produce there would have to be removed, put out into dip, deeper waters and cleansed for certain some number of passages. That, that, that was my understanding. But you know how that takes place, I'm not sure. The, the red area, they, I have been told in the red area, they are not allowed to use that area for shellfish not even not even take them out and then reharvest them in areas right? you know, the area the, the natural beds they do that with that's my understanding i could be wrong but yeah, that's I, well, I, don't, I don't i don't know for sure yeah and when i went on when i went on norm's you know tour one time he was i think they were trying to get that allowed but i don't think that it, it, it is currently allowed to be able to take shellfish from prohibited areas at all to for even to rehabilitate them. I don't know. That's, but that's, that was my same source, Chris. Yeah. Right. That, well, I don't know that either, Chris. Don't know. All right. Well, as I said, that's, that's not for this evening's discussion. Uh, uh, certainly questions that need to be answered. No question about that. But um, So do you want to put forward, John, a motion for Sprite Island? Because I think all Sprite Island is asking for is exactly what they had. Well, that's what I mean. I have no problem moving over forward. Over the last many years, they're not looking Sprite for Sprite Island application. I have no problem with that. So why don't you put a motion forward then? Uh, well, then, well, I have to, all those in it. Well, this is from discussion from last, 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 uh, uh, last month with regard to uh, uh, having, having uh, the shellfish applicant or the uh, Sprite Island application, just move forward, have no objection to uh, what they're proposing. All right, is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. All right, all, all, in, all in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Did you, we, were, we were talking about Sprite Island or, or Norwalk Island? Sprite. No, it was Sprite, Sprite, Island. Sprite Island. But it was, okay. All right, the, 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 issue, the issue was, again, that, that came up was with, with the Norwalk, Norwalk Yacht Club, basically. And uh, the use of uh, uh, natural beds in that in those areas. So, can I make a motion on on the Norwalk Yacht Club application? All right. That uh, because I think there, my understanding is there are two things, and Jill, correct me if I'm wrong, that they're requesting. One is an extension of 30 days to pull the moorings out, all the moorings out. And, and and be able to put them in earlier than the April 15th on the natural, the ones on the natural shellfish beds. And then secondarily, Jill, again, correct me if I'm wrong, there's the request to leave moorings in year round that are on no shellfish beds. So, and that's, I that's think that, that was the that's issue. what DEP is talking about, right. John, because that's, that's the correct. other ones they're going to take out anyway. 
That's correct, Lori. That, that's okay. That's correct. So, so should I make? Uh, can I make a motion that that allows or enables Norwalk Yacht Club, like Row Eight and Yacht Club, to have till November thirty first to remove the moorings that are on the natural shellfish beds and to put them in thirty days earlier? So that would be March fifteenth, which is what we what we okayed for uh, Row 8 and Yacht Club. Row 8 and Yacht Club, that, 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 that's correct. But as I said, I have, have no issues with that you know, right now, but as I said, moving forward, that the shell fishermen perhaps might have, they wanted to have a say in that with regard to removing over the, over the, the natural shellfish, shellfish by there. That was the issue I thought that was brought up at the Shellfish Commission last, last week or two weeks ago. So can I make that motion? Uh, all right. Anyone anyway, second, second that? Second. All right. Good. All right. As I said, I, I, you know, uh, until I hear anything different, you know, from and I have not, you know, from the shellfish people, uh, I, you know, all those in favor. So just a uh, question on the motion as far as the extension of the time is concerned. And again, it's not an issue for me personally, but is there anything that is written in the Harbor Management Plan that says that moorings have to be out by a certain date, docks have to be out by a certain date? And if that's the case, would there need to be a modification to the management plan? No, no, it wouldn't. We would, you know, I, I think, I think we do. I don't, I don't have the language, direct language in front of me, John, but we do have, we do have um, verbiage in place for, for removal of moorings. Excuse me. We do have, we do have uh, language in place for, for removal of moorings. But we don't, but we don't require that. As the managers of the field, we don't follow our own rules. No. What, yeah, we, what, What moorings are you referring to, Chris? More, well, we're talking about Norwalk, Norwalk waters. In the management, we're talking about the, we're talking about the management plan. It's talking about Norwalk waters, right? That's yes. correct. Okay. Uh, I I know, Chris, that we we require uh, moorings be removed in all our fields that are under direct control by uh, us. And, and, and as far as I know, all, all of the um, managed fields, Yacht Club and uh, Sprite Island and Rowan oh. and Mulwalk, they were all subject to that in the past. All right, no, I, I, I don't have first hand, I, when I asked before if, if, if the moorings in Norwalk Harbor were removed, the answer was no, they're not. They, they are not. They are every not. two years that you have to have them inspected. They have to be inspected every two years. Correct. But they're not the removed. Tackle be, could be in place. They for are not years. removed. They're not removed. They're, that's correct. Unless the ice removes them, and then that's hard luck on yeah. you. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and Chris, there are moorings in Wilson Cove that are town moorings that are not removed. And they're side by side with Norwalk Yacht Club. They're just farther north in the cove. So to your point, they fall under a bit different rules. Right. Well, then this is something then the mooring committee will have to uh, perhaps uh, have to, perhaps to address, John. Yes, and, and unfortunately, along just, along with the harbor, along with the harbor master, just not here at this moment to help guide us, and and Dennis, who's the Foreign committee chair right. is not here as well. Well, that perhaps for a later discussion. I mean, I think it's important issues that, you know. But then you'll have to deal with, with these other Sprite and all walk tonight. Yes, I, th I think we can do that. So again, my motion is to, and this has, my motion relates to removal of the moorings. So not having the moorings in year round on the areas where there are no shellfish beds. My motion is to 
allow, like we allowed Row 8 and Yacht Club, the month extension. an additional 30-day extension to get them out. So 30 days beyond October 31st and 30 days earlier to put them in. So they would be removed, but to allow those extensions on either end. Which is what we did approve for Row 8 and Yacht Club. Right, that's correct. Anybody and Chris have... seconded it. Well, all those in favor with that particular motion, as I said, <laughs> and hands, aye, aye, aye. Two, three, four, five, fine. All right. And okay. those other issues with regard to moorings, I think we need to bring that up before Dennis. Yeah, well, we need we need to have more clarification, big picture, long term. No question. And and the thing is, what I'd also like to do is I'll discuss also with Sue Bailey what those future plans, uh, you know, of the DEP uh, really would be, and to have some sort of language put in place that we could perhaps review and uh, and scrutinize. You know, I think we need to also, uh, to Chris's point, in regards the uh, the the moorings that are under under our mooring committee's control, uh, that should be addressed as well, because there should be some kind of language within the system, especially with all the traffic that we're, we're going to have with barges and transport down for the during the length of the walk bridge, that we make find that it's necessary or needed to have moorings removed in that traffic pattern. So, I mean, we're going to need to have the ability to do that. Well, that's the harbor master's job, right? The harbor master decides is the, is the authority on where moorings are placed and where they're not placed. Right. But I, again, that's, that's for the initial placement of them. But if they're not being removed when they may need to be removed, you know, I'm sure the harbor master could lay in on that for sure. But I don't know. We need to, we need to, you know, set that in stone somehow. That's again further, you know, future instruction. All right. All right. All right. We're going to move forward with those two applications and Bright Sprite Island and and uh, Nauk Yacht Club as as uh, as voted on. Okay. All right. So uh, the uh, did we vote on Sprite Island? We, we did not vote on Sprite. <laughs> oh, I thought we. Oh no, I thought we. I thought there was a show of hands for Sprite Island. Right. We had a show of hands for Sprite Island. We had a show of hands. Yeah. I. I. I you know. So as I said, we have no problem moving forward with the application as presented, and we voted on that. I believe, I believe, Carlson. You know, huh? all right. We can do that again. Just no, that's it. fine. I, I didn't, I didn't hear yeah, that. That's, that's fine. Right. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. If it was done, it's done. I, I, I thank you. Allow Sprite Island moving forward with the Sprite Island application as present early presented. Uh, uh, as I said. Uh, it went as presented, John, because there were no issues with it. It's just a, continu no. a continuation of the existing COP to move That's forward for another 10 year period. That's correct. All the uh, we're waiting for was the response from the uh, the shellfish commission, which I don't believe I, you know, the issue was over natural shellfish beds. That was the only, that's the only issue that I heard. Sprite Island doesn't have that concern. No, they don't. So, so like what I said, we can move forward with the Sprite Island application as presented. And all yeah. those in favor? I, I said, I. You want to vote it again? We had a second. Yeah, we had a second of that. Yeah. I think that was uh, Jeff's second in that. I seconded it. Jeff yeah. Mangle's second. Okay. So, yeah. all right. We move mm -hmm. forward. Just for a quick clarification, I've looked in the harbor management plan. It doesn't say anything about removing the moorings, but you cannot have a boat on a mooring from right. January 1st to March 15th. Yeah, that's correct. That's, that's, that's correct. On the mooring. Everything has to be removed from the harbor. Yes. But it doesn't say about removing the mooring itself. Not, just not take, just, just no. use just just the use vessel. Of but there is an issue with regard to inspection of the tackle. Yeah, the inspection of the There's a period for that two years. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Moving forward, we have uh, 72 Shorefront Park. It's a pre-application. I believe this is uh, Mr. Mr. Hiltz is here uh, to discuss that. It's a, the, the uh, applicant plans to construct the four by 75 foot, uh, I mean, uh, 75 foot uh, piling supported timber pier uh, with a three foot by 34 uh, foot aluminum ramp and an eight foot by 20 foot piling anchored timber floating dock for a private recreational boating. So uh, 
Mr. Hiltz, if you'd like to uh, give a brief presentation of that. This is yeah, a, this is a pre-application. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, basically we're, we're at that phase. Um, it's been reviewed by DEP. Uh, Sue Bailey looked at it primarily. Her, her only question was, and it was actually a, a fault of mine for not clarifying on the plans that, you know, regarding the decking being open grading, which it will be, that's become, um, that's akin to the other fixed pier that's in the neighborhood there that spans the inter intertidal wetland vegetation. That's right. That's to allow a lot of sunlight to penetrate through. Exactly. Exactly. So you know, we min minimize any shading impacts on that. As you can see from the uh, the plans, if you've reviewed them, uh, you know, we have float stops for the float. Uh, it's not intended to have a boat berth at the dock. You know, the boat. You know, a boat may access it at higher tides. Obviously, if you're familiar with the area, you know that there's a substantial intertidal flat there, and it's pretty shallow water for you know, at least 300, if not more feet out to the channel, basically. Um, other than that, uh, you know, it's just basically, this is, um, I, you know, you're probably familiar with the area. You're starting to see a lot of houses being built down there and, and that are, you know, more expensive than the houses that they're replacing. And along with those houses come people wanting peers. So that, that's I mean, where, yeah. it. There, you know, There's a, one comment that was made about the length of the dock, uh, the length of that dock and how far it extends out into the, uh, uh, into the harbor. Uh, and I don't know whether you did send this to the Shellfish Commission. Yes, sir. As a pre, right, as a pre-application. And we have not heard uh, from them. I don't know if they have had a chance to review that as yet. Um, but um, but um, uh, like I said, we certainly should wait and confer to, to some of their uh, viewpoint on, on, on that that area just so you know is you know there there's a to the what would that be to the north of where the proposed pier is is there's an area right adjacent kind of adjacent to that uh, masonry groin that's shown on the plans and right immediately adjacent to the tidal wetland vegetation there's an area you know a hard area that does sustain you know oyster growth where the proposed pier is, is it's soft mud. So you're not getting into an area that's, that's going to be, you know, supporting any oyster propagation. And you do recommend that, that the uh, docks and the uh, dock would be removed appropriately during. Uh, in yeah, that, that's that, you know, I mean that there, you know, there's a significant fetch there, you know, it's in the winter time you get weather and, you know, there's, there's no point in having that, you know, sit out there and take a beating. And uh, you know the dock is equidistant from the uh, littoral property lines, and so that sort of sits right in the center there. So, um, uh, uh, anyone in, in the commission members have any comment or anything you wanted to add? I mean, we can certainly um, uh, it's a pre-application, and certainly recommend moving forward with the full application, uh, with the, the caveat of uh, having uh, waiting for comment from the Shellfish Commission if they do have any issues uh, pending. Uh, with regard to the length of the dock or in the shellfish area. But uh, as far as the commission is concerned, uh, I don't know if anyone has any, no see any issue with the application moving forward as presented. Anyone have any comment or? Just make your motion, John, it moves forward. Right. I'd like to make a motion that the application uh, move forward, that we'd have no objection uh, for uh, them putting together, uh, again, a formal application. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll second that, John. Jeff Bankle seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No, po no oppositions? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. All Thanks. right. Good night, everybody. If I don't talk to you all, happy holidays. You too, Thank John. You. Thank you. Thanks. Merry Bye. Christmas, John. Merry Christmas, Jeff. And the last application is at uh, Farm Creek Road. Um, it's from uh, Catherine uh, uh, Eberly, uh, who's the applicant, and she plans to demolish an existing single family resident and construct an on site new family uh, resident uh, that's to be FEMA compliant uh, with regard to flood, uh, 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 flooding. And the uh, western edge of the property boards on, uh, borders on Farm Creek tidal wetlands. And uh, I won't go through the entire uh, description of, of what was proposed. Uh, they do plan to have uh, a uh, Coltec system for, uh, for drainage uh, uh, off of the property. 
Um, and um, the applicant proposes also to increase the native plantings between the lawn and the tidal wetland boundary to uh, restore the vegetative buffer area, uh, which is certainly uh, 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 commendable as far as the uh, applic the uh, applicant is concerned, as far as uh, assuring that no uh, uh, runoff actually hits uh, excessive hit, hits Nog Harbor. So if uh, I think is Miss Eberly here, if you want. Yeah, to hi guys. Here. Sorry, I don't know why multiple screens say my name on them, and maybe one of them is Wayne Devanzo. You have three. Or... You have three, Catherine yes. Eberly. Right. Sorry, guys. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm hoping Wayne might come on. Um, I'm here. Yeah, I, I don't have video unfortunately, but. I'm okay. one of you. <laughs> okay, okay, good. <laughs> um, and to I, clarify, I noticed, yeah. I noticed also that you you plan to uh, again propose to include uh, post construction removal of an effort of invasive species. Yeah, which certainly we certainly support that as far as the plan is concerned. So um, we're working with Alexandra Mock, who's a wetland soil scientist, oh. and she's also a landscape designer. Um, so post construction, she'll help us with all that. And uh, for clarification, I'm the applicant. I'm one third of Eight Farm Creek. Um, I'm the architect and co-owner, and then um, I'm a Darien resident. And then the other two people, um, one is Amanda Spatola, who's a Norwalk resident and she's a realtor. And then the third component is Eric Salveson, who's our builder and he lives up in Newtown. But um, it's not, it, we're doing this as a development project mainly. I wanna get into development because I wanna do it better than some of the stuff I've seen around Fairfield County. Um, particularly as it relates to environmental concerns. So, uh, any uh, commissioners have any issues or problems with this application? No, uh, just move it, move it, John. Okay. Uh, I as again, I'd like to have a motion to uh, uh, to recommend that the uh, that the Harbor Commission uh, has uh, certainly no objection with the application moving forward. And that it agrees with the uh, several issues of the harbor management plan with regard to uh, 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 runoff, water runoff, and also uh, the uh, revitalization of the area based on uh, the type of plantings that are used. We do have some language in there regarding that, and uh, uh, removal of invasive species uh, in that environment. Uh, so, um, uh, if anyone other has any issues, uh, other issues with that, or? Is, is there a second to John's motion? Second. I'll second. Aye. Jeff Bangle seconds. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Extensions? Well, Catherine, thank Opposed. you very much. I, I, I enjoyed reading that, that plan of yours, and I wish you luck and success in putting that on. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you all. Have a good night. To you too. Happy holidays. Bye. Take care. Thank you all. Happy holidays. Um, that's all we have for application review, John. Um, well, uh, what, what, why don't you, because you have all the paperwork and, and you've been discussing this at length with Jeff in terms of uh, what we need to do to simulate a public hearing. Oh, so why yes. Don't, yes why, don't I, we, why don't we jump into that? Okay, I have, wait a minute, let me see if I get that out here. Yeah, we plan to initiate a uh, public hearing on the Walk Bridge project. And... Um, we have a petition. We'd like to send it. Well, we're going to be sending around a petition uh, on that on that project, uh, in which we require uh, twenty five, at least twenty five signatures uh, to move forward with um, with a public hearing. And the public hearing uh, basically is uh, involving the proposed activity, which includes removal, obviously, of the existing uh, railroad bridge that is the walk bridge, and the construction of the new railroad bridge and will affect aquatic and coastal resources and tidal wetlands. So we want to, uh, again, uh, force a public hearing to uh, review exactly what they what they plan to do uh, in that area, because we not, have not had an opportunity to address all of the points uh, that they had uh, that they had discussed. So uh, we have a uh, we have an application for. So I have that here. So what's yeah, gonna yeah. happen? What's gonna have to happen is you're gonna take these around, and Jeff, I'm, I'm assuming you're gonna be pretty involved, getting signatures in your club, and Lori and her neighborhood and others. Uh, 
you 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 print these out. Yeah, I will have <laughs> I'll have copies of that, and uh, and I'll have the letterhead. It's for applicant, and I have the application number that we need to address, and I have that here. It's a 201-909-990, and I don't know what they call it. It's SDF and TWWQC as far as the some lettering app that follows that. But uh, we need to put together, again, that application. It's a petition, and we have uh, probably about two weeks to get this together. We have 40 days from November, uh, no, 40 days from November 15th to uh, submit, submit the, uh, the petition to uh, 79 Elm Street in, uh, in Hartford. And- um, So this is gonna happen this weekend, if you think about it, because the holiday being here and all of that. Yeah, so what we needed, certainly not, we just need names and we need uh, email addresses. And uh, where is it here? Name address, email address, and telephone and contact number. Contact number, basically, yeah. And, you, and you're gonna print them out and have people sign them individual. So it's not gonna be like the formal, like you would think of a petition, like we've done all done online, where we just keep signing and the names keep gathering. So the way it's gotta be, it's gonna be uh, individual, one, pa one page for each person, and then we will scan, scan them in and then forward it to the proper authorities to, uh, at the, to get a uh, hearing going. Well, I'd like to get more. They require 25 signatures and names, et cetera. But I'd like to have certainly a little bit more than that, just in case uh, something falls through the cracks. I don't know what, but uh, but uh, uh, what we basically need is the the um, uh, street address and city and town and the state and email addresses. And Bruce, you could go around visiting people too, uh, do an exercise on your on your bad knee. <laughs> some therapy absolutely john so to just to gather gather signatures and you know say hello to the community and just bring them abreast of what's going on with us here at the commission and your role as well as harbor yeah. harbor uh the harbor master so uh that'll that'll be helpful and chris i guess in your community and you laurie in your community you know that would be yeah it's already it's already underway in Village Creek. There's a, there's somebody pretty active and um, it's already sent around. Is this an adjudicatory hearing or is this just a public hearing? Public under... hearing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I have the form. Let's say I have, well, you can see it here. I'm gonna, let's see. This is the form here. You can see that. I don't have the, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I send, I can send around the, Basically, the second sheet, if you'd like, or I can, you can print that out, and we can get sort of signatures on that, and I'll put everything all together once we get all the signatures. And then, John, what do you mean by the second sheet? Is the language oh, 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 on no, the no, top no, the, sheet? The, the front sheet only goes to uh, number eleven. The, the the second sheet is just uh, the second sheet. Just well, actually, I'll send the whole thing out. I'll send the whole thing out and just uh, yeah. I I thought I thought would Jeff had said. To explained it to me is to use one sheet for each person and then take all then he'll take all of those and scan it into the system well you, you could you well you could you can do that or i mean there's there's uh i could let me, let me show you here uh you can see you can see that there's uh you know the item the names are numbered down in here names are down numbered down in here and all it really needs you, you can have is for example on this front page here with the head signature over here, uh, with the sort of the contact person, which I'll, I'll put my name up there. Uh, and then the signees will be down in here. You could put 11 people on this side and there's from 12 to 25 on the other side. So basically all, it doesn't have to be numbered. I, uh, all of these is to be, have the, the uh, person's name, et cetera there, and they can put those all together. And I can yeah, just- Yeah, the whole uh, idea is to get in excess of 50 or more this way, if the case well, they throw them basically, out. Basically all you need is 25, but I would certainly like to get a little bit more than 25. Yeah. Can there be more than one signature per household? Per uh, address? That, that, that I don't know uh, what the, what the rules and the regulations are here. Let me see. Uh, let's see, petitions for hearing. Uh, the petitions for a hearing shall be submitted within 40 days from the date of publication of the of this public notice, which was November 15th, uh, November, November 15th. And um, 
and shall include the application number noted above, which I have on there, and also identify a contact person to receive the notifications. Petitions shall also identify a person who is authorized to engage in discussion regarding the application, and if resolution is reached, withdraw the petition. In order to facilitate the filing of requests for hearing during the COVID-19 emergency and consistent with the uh, department's temporary directive, the Office of Adjudication will accept electronically filed petitions in addition to petitions submitted by mail. Petitions with required signatures may be filled by, uh, filed by email to the Office of Adjudication at, and they gave me, a, they gave me the email address. Uh, so I remember it. Within 30 days of the filing of the petition, original petitions that were filed electronically must also be mailed. So we have to mail the actual, in addition to what we send electronically, the actual signatures that we received. Um, uh, it says if the, let's see, where, where did I leave off here? Uh, if the original petition exists only in electronic format or signatures were produced using computer or typewriter, petition must be submitted with a statement bearing the wet ink signature of the petitioner that the petition is only, ava uh, only available in that format and has been submitted to satisfy mm -hmm. the requirement that it, an original petition be filed. Uh, if a hearing is held, timely notice of such hearing will be published in the newspaper of general circulation and posted on the DEP website. Okay, so more Lord, than one person so perhaps. The Lord's, the Lord's question is who can, who can sign the, who can be a petitioner? I think it sounds like more than one person, Chris. Because well, yeah, I mean, any citizen, of, this, any citizen of Connecticut, discussion. I would assume. Right, that's what it sounds like. Well, yeah. They, they stipulated that if you had five people in the household and they were all adult and uh, had some sort of sanity about them, that they couldn't sign it. Right. Okay, that's good to know. More signatures. So, as I said, I'll, I'll make copies of that and I'll send, send those out to us. To everyone. But even but every every member every individual has to fill out an, an individual form, correct? No, no, no. Uh, you, you can. I, I, I understood that, but apparently, according to John, no. No, okay. I mean, uh, it's, what eventually we're going to need is the original signatures, and you know, on, and, and they pointed out on the original ink, which we can send in. But I can I can make an electronic copy, and we can get if those ink copies, all those individual copies that I received. I'll send them a copy of what we have, but I'll also have perhaps the original signatures that everyone has uh, in, in, in preparation of what they might need. Yeah. That's all. But I will, I'd like to first get out an electronic copy to them, which I'll put together you know, with all the signatures. And then separately, we'll have, again, handwritten signatures of, of people who have signed that petition. Right. Um, if there's no other issues, we can move forward again, John. We do have one aspect to discuss, as most of you are, know that uh, Greg Scully has um, resigned from Harbor Commission. And um, we contacted the uh, DEP and um, uh, talked to several people there. What Greg needs to do, Bruce, and I, I think I did send you an email, what he needs yeah, to right. do is to send the governor's office to uh, Jeanette, uh, this uh, Janice uh, uh, Donnell, uh, the uh, her, his notice of of, uh, of um, resignation, and perhaps a little explanation, and then um, uh, also send a copy to Kim Zapla, who is with DEP, who is in charge of the Harbor Harbor Master uh, Harbor Master Program of, of Deep. Uh, I, I think Gray has done that. Yeah, I think. Well, he's I, I don't know. I, I, I as of, as of two days ago, I, I don't know. I did send him an email of what he has to do. And then, right. Bruce, you have all the uh, responsibility and the duties and authorities of the harbor master uh, as as deputy harbor master uh, in preparation of certainly a new harbor master, which we would like to certainly propose you as as harbor master. But in doing so, we need to move forward. We need three. We need in addition to your name, we need two additional names to go along with that. All right, so why don't, why don't I bring us up to speed in, in, in that regard, okay? So for the Harbor Master position, obviously our preference at this moment is Bruce. Right. He's deputy, he's, he's well-versed in what's going on. He, he did a lot of the duties as right. deputy, as would, yeah. would have the expectation of, of Harbor Master. To, at this point, we've had three people put their hat in the ring and they're all aware of the fact that we're going to utilize them as far as supplying names to the uh, 
the governor's office for our, in our submission because we're required by rules that we supply three three names to the governor's office. The well, we, have, we have the authority, not the authority, but we have the right to triage each correct, one. Correct. 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 Right. And there's a there's a formatted letter that Fairfield used that we could we could parallel. Well, um, we we have one of our own, John, because we've done this several times already. Correct. So that that's that's not going to be an issue. But let, just let me bring people up to speed. The other people that have have, have uh, made their uh, position known that that they have an interest were uh, Mike Silva, who's a Norwalk police officer that was on the Norwalk Marine Police for many, many years. It just got shifted over to community community policing. Uh, Michael Harden, who was a former uh, Harbor Management Commission uh, member and just recently the chair of the Norwalk Parking Authority and uh, Peter Johnson. All three of them have put their names into the ring. I have had discussion with them. They all understand what our position is overall. So what I'd like to see happen is that at this point, we, we put in Bruce's name as our preferred and add in Mike Silva and, and, and Michael Harding as the other two people in that submission. Um, and then we need to, we also need to put in for deputy. Uh, I don't know if they have to be done simultaneously. It could be done simultaneously. Yes. But, but does not have to be done simultaneously. That's correct. So we That's can, correct. we could put, we can have further discussion on it. So then when that time comes at this moment, we have Mike Silva, Mike Harding and Peter Johnson that will, will be willing to serve as deputy. Right. So it, right now, our, our major concern is to, is to move forward. <laughs> and I'd like to see a vote in a commission supporting those those three names, Silver Harding and, and uh, Lavallo, and Lavallo being our preference for Harbor Master. Right. Now, yeah. and, well, okay. just before, and keep in mind that the, uh, the tenure that, Bruce, that you would have is starting at the time you get appointed, you will have three years. In other words, you don't take over for um, for uh, Greg's uh, Greg's right. Right, right 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 so his 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 uh, his tenure stops now at the, his letter of recommend uh, resignation and when you're appointed you will have a full three years uh, as as that position as 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 uh, mm -hmm. host Understood. right now he he continues in his role as deputy because that's what he's been appointed that's at. correct he has all the duties of the harbor but 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 undertaking the duties of the harbor master. Well, that so, would just be the title, so, take the duties, but the title. Hold on. Be hold on. So he has a continuation in, in, in filling the role of harbor master because of the vacation. That's correct. The, the, the office being vacated. When the appointment goes through, it could happen in a week, two weeks, 10 weeks, three months, because that's we've seen that in the past as well. Mm -hmm. Then, then his tenure would start when the official appointment goes down. That's correct. For three so years. Right. That's correct. So there's a motion forward. To, Laurie, you have can a question? I, John, can, I'm sorry. Can I just clarify? And I support whatever you guys feel because I don't know the candidates. I'm just <coughs> curious why you wouldn't include Pete Johnson in there if he's interested. Take I mean, I... I don't know why you wouldn't include Pete Johnson in that list. You, you mentioned that there was Mike Silva, the other guy, Mike, who was the Pardon ex commissioner, and Pete Johnson. I was, and but you're recommending that we propose two of those plus Bruce. And I'm just wondering how the decision is made to not, I mean, as I say, I have no opinion. I'm just trying to understand why you would not throw. Pete Johnson in that mix if he's interested, or I'm just trying to because understand. We only we only need to put in three people. Well, we okay. have, we, can, we, we, can have, in, we can put in more, John. But three people has been recommended. We've always done in the past. At least three people should be submitted to the governor's governor's uh, uh, attention. But we could have four. But we so also I mean, have, but we also have the the uh, the um, the ability to uh, to. Uh, uh, indicate who's first, second, third, and fourth. 
you know, as far as uh, choices are concerned, based on experience, uh, based on. Um, uh, I, I have no issue because those are the only people that have come forward, and I have no issue including Peter in that. Uh, in yeah. that man. So if that's the will of the uh, of the commission, that's fine. Can most of us here are new, and it's always been a little to me what the actual responsibilities of the harbor master are well we have we have i have something written chris i can send that to you uh with the duties and responsibilities as far as we are concerned there's a, there's the responsibility that the state has but then we also have have uh uh, uh our own expectation the job requirement of the of the harbor master which we pay for right right is, is there a number of hours i mean it's it's i know there's like a there's a salary for, you know, of well, well, it's not a salary; it's a stipend. Uh, that the okay, st a stipend, a stipend. Um, I mean, my my, con my concern is it is a fairly intensive job for some of the year, and you know, and I guess I can ask Bruce directly. Do you think you have enough time? I mean, you know, how many hours in, in a normal we're work a normal week during the summer do you put in in your in your regular job, and do you have enough time? to do the harbor master job as well. Yeah, time's, time's not a problem. Okay. Um, with, with the duties of the deputy, um, I pretty much work with Dennis with, with the safety and Norm and just monitoring all the moorings in the harbor. Right, okay. And I, and I, I've, now this gets a little more sensitive, but I, I've, I've, I've often thought what, where, where the, Boundaries are when somebody is already on the city payroll, that somebody's already has a has a, a Norwalk City job, and then a stipend to do other work on top of that. I don't want to imply anything, but there's but that you know there is a, how is that? Well, you're talking about double dipping, Chris. As yeah, well. it's basically double dipping, and especially I mean, I mean Mike DeSilva being. Uh, on the on the marine police to begin with, then the rules get. I mean, you know, Greg Scully, he was a he was he was not in the marine police. So when he was doing marine, you know, harbor master duties, it was it's a, it's a separate in the in and of the job description. But somebody's actually on the harbor police, then the job description gets very blurred about what is you know what city work and what's harbor master work. Are they doing harbor master work while they're while they're being paid to do, you know, that would, that would make me especially uncomfortable in terms of appearances and how, how would we just, how would we, how would you say that somebody is not double dipping? Well, first of all, Silver is no longer on the Marine police. That, that's a temp, that was a temporary, re, all those guys were temporary re, reassigned for the winter. Uh, I think Mike's going back. I think, I think, is it Mike retiring? Yeah, he's retiring in, uh, End of, this, end of this summer of 22. Okay. Now, just to tell me, what, what hat do you wear at the time that you're, you know, you're on the water, Chris? I, I certainly appreciate that. That was an issue that we also had with, uh, with Mike Griffin uh, when he was, when he was Harbor Master. He was, he wore several hats uh, during, during that time. He was the dock master down at the, uh, down at the visitor's dock and uh, uh, he was also harbor master, and so he wore he wore several hats at, at, at the same time, and that was a question that that we certainly raised as far as uh, who's what homage is he paying? To, you know, would God is he paying homage to, so to speak? But uh, but uh, no, I can certainly appreciate that. But we have a definite task. There's a da there's a task, a labor task for the for the harbor master. That's 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 written out uh, duties that we request that he does in in January, February, March, etc. So that's all. That's all put down on paper, and that's been agreed on by the commission. As I can say, I can send you. I can send you those duties and responsibilities. Yeah, like this, Nick. I got the sense that some of the some of the you know when we asked for documentation on moorings, we didn't have everything we would. We well, that's would. that's that's up. That's what that's through Dennis. That's you know Dennis. Well, the, the locations. You know, we're supposed right. to have GPS locations for all the moorings. Well, that's correct. I think that's still being worked on, and this is an issue that I that I certainly face as well. I have as well uh, with regard to where are those moorings? Do we have GPS coordinates on all the moorings in, in the harbor? I'd I'd like to see certainly that that being addressed, but you know I don't know if that's been completed though. 
Yeah, that, I mean, that's something that I, you know, I don't know if we work in progress. Well, that's that's what that's what Greg started out to do, whether it was completed or not. I'd have to talk to Dennis or maybe Bruce would know. You know. Do you have any feel on that, Bruce? Say it again, John. On, on what did you have all the GPS coordinates? I know I know if you I know if you go on the um, online mooring website. And if you go on the, uh, uh, the Google Earth of it, all the moorings are in place. And if you click on them, it gives you a, a coordinates of where that mooring is. OK. Right. But I think the commission should have a, a disc, or Dennis should have some sort of plan, I guess, all laid out. Uh, I know one time what we were planning was to have, um, uh, God, what do they call that? Um, Cat, like a CAD program where you, you, you had uh, the shellfish areas, you had the mooring holders, you had, everything was sort of superimposed on, 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 you know, on the harbor. Uh, that was so, sort of work in progress, but I don't think that has ever come, come, come to fruition. Well, you know, part of the expectation and whether it was done or not is that all, all the tackle get inspected and there's a verification of the inspection, a sticker or something on the tackle itself. Plus the registration with the online mooring, right. there's a sticker that goes along with it to make sure everybody has their sticker and a verification of any and all moorings that are under our jurisdiction that are uh, authenticated. So that, that would be part of our expectations as far as uh, Bruce's responsibilities uh, amongst other things, many other things. So, and, and, and going into this year, I mean, what we would like to see, and we've talked to the city about it, is to put in five uh, transient moorings that, yeah. we can, that we can uh, deal with DACWA, that they can electronically go to a website and, and book a mooring, and they'll right. be owned by the city and, and be, be rented out. So that's what our hope is to have that put in place for this season as well. And, and Bruce would have to coordinate that whole scenario. You know, Chris, you know, what I do is, you know, I'm, I've been on, on, I've been boning since I've been seven years old. Um, and, and what I've been doing is I'm constantly um, with Norm Edwards, Dennis, and when I go out and I see a boat on a mooring that doesn't belong, I investigate it. You know what I mean? And then I go back, I take the CT number or the name of the boat. I'm like, oh, well, you didn't pay. So, I'm, you know what I mean? So I go out and, and, and it's basically you, gotta, you, you have to police it yourself. You have to be on the water to do that. So um, that's, that's what I've been doing in, in, the, in the past. You know, I, bring it, I would bring it to Greg's attention, talk to Norm or call the contact boat owner and say, hey, you know, why is this, why is this boat on this morning? That helps at all. Good. Thank, good. Thank you for that. All right. So then uh, moving forward, I'd like to move forward all four people that that's the case. This makes it easier. Uh, Silver Harding and Johnson and uh, Bruce Lavallo as our primary choice for our Well, well, there's a justification. It's it's really the, the triaging the justification for each one of those, and we you know we have to put some verbiage down. Right. So we'll we'll do that. You, you and I will do that, John. All right. Yeah. Uh, so is there a second to that motion with the modification of adding Steve to, uh, B. Johnson? Right. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Okay. Uh, Jeff hasn't joined us, has he? Uh, no, he I said he. Was, I got an email from him. He said he's almost finished. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to. Uh, actually, my report really is kind of inclusive because those are the things I was going to touch on. Was the vote on the petition for the public hearing, which. John did, and the vote for Harbor Master uh, Deputy. We're gonna we're gonna deal with that next month. 
Uh, Harbor Master, you had a small report, uh, Bruce, uh, as an update to the uh, commission, please. Yeah, just uh, um, for my report, uh, as of Monday, there was three boats still on moorings and which they have until uh, end of the month to get their, their boats off. Um, and I'll stay on top of that. And if they're on uh, after, after come January 1st, um, we'll find out why the boats haven't been removed. Okay. And I, you know, I, I talked to Norm Edwards, um, his inspections, a couple of the moorings, um, by going through the online mooring, were inspected. I give it to him, and he's been uh, following up on that. Okay, thank you. I know that sometimes uh, Norm has a, an issue trying to get onto the site to uh, upload that inspection report. I do know that. Uh, Tom Rutherford seems to be okay uh, in getting most of that in. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's always slow to, uh, get that going. Okay. There's also a police, uh, a report by Peter LePak that was, uh, sent out to all the commissioners. Uh, and he, he gave you some statistics year over year. Uh, so I just encourage you all to read that, uh, mooring and Harbor safety. Dennis said that uh, he has no uh, report and wishes everybody a Merry Christmas. Shellfish Commission, uh, wish they were here, but no one's here. So we're gonna move that. Uh, I spoke to him about our annual uh, holidays Christmas party. And uh, they said they would, would still like to do something, but we'll do it after the first of the year. So I look forward to uh, an announcement on that. Uh, finance, Alan Kibbe sent a financial report and he would like us to vote on the, on the proposed budget. Did everyone get it and review it? It was, oh, no. it was sent out earlier today. Uh, he, no. uh, he, he, mm -hmm. he and I went over the proposed budget and uh, it, it's all in line of what we need to do. And you all need to read it and individually vote on it. So I'm gonna challenge you all to read it tonight after the meeting and either, uh, and then email me tonight and copy Alan that you either agree or don't agree because we need to move it forward for, for submission. And we're supposed to have signatures in writing but we're not meeting publicly, but in, he's gotten, I think, uh, some sort of understanding that is, as long as we vote out, vote on it uh, during the meeting, and I'll I'll let Michelle know the results of the of the vote, so she can formalize it. So and, what? So John, we got we got a grant application and the twenty one actuals. Right. Um, I didn't see a twenty two budget. Well, the, the, the budget is, is kind of like the grant application, pretty much parallel. Well, it's and, and the budget so was, the budget was done earlier. Uh, the budget is attached to the grant application, Chris. Oh, is it all right? Man. So it, you know, if you could review those. All right. And uh, we we do have monies left over, but the, the city's been remiss in terms of uh, what has been charged back for us to us, like secretarial, uh, harbor uh, master payments, uh, and, and, and another laundry list of things that are usually charged to us. Uh, Jeff traditionally has, is, is his fashion, wasted the last minute to get his final bills in, so there could be open bills on his end. So <laughs> there's there's a, a, a lot that show why we're showing that we're sitting fat, but we're, we're really not. And we have monies that we need to expend. There's repairs and fuel and, and like uh, for the uh, the Harbor Master shellfish slash shellfish boat that, that haven't been charged against the boat. And we need uh, bills for that too. And I think 
we have an account at, uh, at uh, Cove that I haven't seen a bill on. Uh, and that's, he's, regard, he's relating to that as well. So, you know, we're, we're, we look, it looks like we have a lot of money, but we, but we most likely don't. But our budget is our budget. And uh, last year, what we submitted was knocked down too uh, substantially. So we'll see what happens now. There'll be a budget meeting coming up, I'm sure, before the end of the year. Wow. All right. So let's see what else we have on here. Uh, Jeff, plans or recommendations? Sure. Uh, so I did speak with uh, Jeff uh, Stedman uh, regarding the response from the city uh, that we that we got a while ago. Well, it wasn't a while ago. It was on the I believe it was on the sixth of December, uh, and I have to say that legal actually did go through. It didn't just uh, you know say, ah, oh, forget this, and we're not, we're not going to do that. So, um, so they did give it a lot of thought and, and touched on everything. And uh, as far as moving forward with the, uh, the fees, uh, application review fee, uh, slip fees, uh, and the mooring, uh, flat rate mooring, uh, fee. We can certainly do some of those now, and I and Jeff and I believe that we can also uh, implement the the slip fee. I, I, what I want to do is have a, a meeting with the uh, with the Norwalk so that we can explain this in detail. One of the one of the uh, uh, the people that that uh, Jeff Stedman had. Uh, contacted was uh, with Deep, and he's uh, an attorney. And his opinion uh, is that we we would have the right to implement a fee. Uh, I just want to get everything in line, and then get an audience with uh, with the city to uh, to go over that, and possibly have uh, the Deep contact also on that on that call, Zoom call, I would imagine it's going to be, I doubt that it's, uh, I doubt that it's going to be in person. So uh, I think moving forward, we, we will be able to at least, at the very least, go ahead with an application uh, review fee, as well as uh, doing a flat rate mooring, uh, which would be a hundred dollars. So the answer is, is that we have the potential of looking forward in fiscal year 2023. Correct. I would, uh, I would say yes. Yeah, we've, uh, we were hoping to get this by 2020. Yeah. 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 The way the system is, is flowing. I mean, pandemic aside, I think a tremendous, a lot of work was done during the pandemic, but, uh, to, 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 to no real consequence as far as uh, we're concerned. Our, our biggest impediment was the city to a degree and the, push, uh, and the pushbacks that we got from that. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to go on record saying that, but uh, well, so long as you did. Yeah. I, but, you know, again, they're, they're just trying to be fair to everyone concerned. They're trying to make it where it's, it's not a lawsuit that we look correct. We, that we're that we're put in, we want to be standing on solid ground, and yep. uh, you know, and, and I and I get that. But at the end of the day, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're doing what others are doing, and we're doing, we're doing what the city is actually doing in the Five Mile River. Right. That is correct. In Norwalk. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's correct, Chris, and that's that's one of the points that we're uh, uh, we're making. Uh, and, uh, you know, there should not be any reason not to be able to do this. Right. And DEP has no problem with it. Right. So, so if we're, if we're at this point now, what about the, what about private slips? How is, do we have a process for doing that? I started working on it last year just to get an example, but there's a lot of, you know, but there's a lot more work that could be done with the, with the, with the city tax database, as well as. I just did a Google Earth purview and then checked a few streets on on the tax tax records, and it 
And my guess is it depended on whether the assessor knew to look around the back and write it down or not. Well, correct. You know, I mean, I think that all the docs should be uh, taxed for sure. Um, you know, a use fee that might be a little more or a maintenance fee, harbor management fee, uh, that might be a little more complicated uh, for private residents versus okay. a commercial entity. So right now it's just gonna be commercial? Commercial entities, correct. Yeah, it's a problem with, with, with a lot of docks being on time uh, is because they didn't have water or uh, electric that a permit was actually taken out for. Uh, I've talked yeah. to build, the building department about it because it, it, it's my contention that all these docks originate at, on land and generally a, a, a concrete footing is put in to anchor to in, in one shape, form or other, that's not being inspected to see if it's been put in properly. You know, and that would be the impetus behind it, but there's no requirements. Mm -hmm. So that's what no. my deep for the building department to institute something like that. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe on the fulfillment side, if we get the ability to charge a fee for plan review, and maybe that gets tied into the uh, tax department some, somehow, where there's a sign off that's necessary to go through the system, that at the closing out of that permit, now it gets picked up. And that's, yeah. that was the case, and there was no permit to close out, so they never. Yeah, I mean, when I, what I looked at, I looked at the Farm Creek area when I just went through, through, through block by block to see whether what was listed and what wasn't listed. And it was literally like this row of houses, every single dock was counted. You go around the corner on the next street, a different block lot number, none of the, none of the docks were counted. It was, I think it was literally whoever did the first assessment, whether they knew to look for it or not. I mean, you know, that, that's the way the world works. It's like, it depends on whether the, the person doing the job, you know, knew whether, to, knew whether to do it or not do it. And in some cases they're counted, in other cases they're not counted. And it's and it, I think it entirely has to do with the assessor because the the assessor is the one that produced that form. Well, it and, has a lot to do with the field card, I think, too, Chris, because they go all these assessors and or the people that they hire for reval. Yeah, they go, they go by the field card. So if there's right nothing, if there's nothing denoted on there that a permit was taken out. Right. Yeah. If there's if it's not on the field card from the first time it was done, or there's no outstanding permits, then permits on the card, then they're not going to know. They're not going to look for it. It's not going to be recorded. And it seems pretty spotty about whether it is actually recorded or not. But I got something that'll make you feel good, though. Uh, I was at uh, a meeting of the industrial land use. It was our, yeah. our first meeting the other day. And we were, and it had, this particular meeting had to do with the East Basin, which you were supposed to be. And it, it, was, it was expected that you would be at that meeting. I, I know I, I I got ended up getting double booked for that time. I'll be at the next one in February. Right, but important for you is that we were talking about the parameters and the way that this whole thing originated and how the channel was moved and that yep. East Bay dockage was put in. We started talking about public access, and we went over to the first street scenario and the head of engineering. Uh, got totally excited about First Avenue. Oh, about access, Vanessa? First Street? Yeah. Yes. So that's something to pursue and, and go to the next level on. Okay, good. Wait, I, I, wait, you, I, wait, wait you're, talk, you're talking about, what do you mean? First, you mean First Street? First Street. Street. That's yeah. Second Street. That's not First Street. No, First no, Street. it's First Street. What's First Street? Where? First, uh, next around to Harbor Potter, Lights. next to Harbor Lights. The street mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of pass. waterfront access, yeah. You're talking right near the third taxing district. Both, no. both of them are options. Oh. The third, the third tax, the second street is third taxing district. Prop right. is the right. abutter on one side. That that's good. That's good waterfront access. First street is next to Harbor Lights oh. and Harbor oh. Lights in the condo. That's okay. also good harbor access. Both of those streets are. Okay, oh, I, I, I got you. I got you. I got you. Right. Um, and, it, and if, it's, if it's Vanessa, I'll follow up with her. I'm pretty good friends with Vanessa. So. Okay, follow up with her because she got excited because good. on the redesign of the docks, they're looking to take into consideration uh, watercraft. Yeah. Uh, oh. 
thingies. So I said, you really want to do something good. I brought up the first street extension right. and she got all excited about that. So that's something that's worth pursuing. So. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I need to jump back on that, that thing that it's I started. Not, it's not in this uh, RFP. No, no, no. I know. This is just about, this is, so did, did, did certainly be in a, in a future one. Right. So Jeff, Jeff, Jeff read, read them, you know, not read them, but he informed them of the, the Army Corps' requirement for equal access, right? Jeff was at the meeting, yes. Yeah. I mean, did he let them know that the Army Corps is going to make them charge the same for residents and not non-residents? That was a focus point of him. Of okay. Good. And, and they were aware of it. Okay. I I mentioned that to I mentioned I talked to Vanessa before the meeting, but I didn't get to it. Um, okay. And I did read the minutes. All right. Um, let's see. So, are you done with plans and recommendations, Jeff? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to stretch this meeting here to get Jeff on. Does Jeff think he's going to get on in his email to you, Pinto? You're muted. Uh, uh, he said he was almost finished, but I don't know what almost means. <laughs> it comes to Jeff. Well, <laughs> at, at this point, then I'm going to I'm going to leave maybe stop, it. At, maybe stop for a donut. <laughs> right. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to leave the meeting at at that that where where we're at. Charge everybody that by mid morning tomorrow, you all email Michelle. With your understanding and a vote, and my 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 vote right now is yes on the uh, on the on the budget that we put into. Uh, I have to look at that yeah. proposal that we put into the city for our. I, I see that that came through later on this. Yeah, it came through uh, early this afternoon. I didn't see it a chance to see that. Yeah, I got it. I'll review that. And my vote is yes, Michelle. So you can record that and. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, are there minutes that we have to approve, John? Um, I don't see. Yeah, any. we have three minutes to approve. I, I there, I, I, but I, I had read earlier in the original something you sent out earlier that you had a couple of different minutes that need to be approved, right, John? John yeah, there's, there's, there's three there's three meetings that need to be approved 10 right. 6 10 right, well, and 11 17. Well, so let's go through those why don't you take the lead on that john please crespo um well you know let me see if i um i don't know what else what would you like me to say um well, i sent them out and a, i that, didn't get much of responses that, were there responses or changes that were asked for and let's do them individually oh. and on them individually. Um, well, 10-6 was a couple of months ago. There were a couple of, uh, of uh, amendments. And 10-27, um, 10, and, uh, 10 27, there was one from John Pinto, who's the person who normally sends something out, which is greatly appreciated. For the last one, 11-17, no, no one responded. So I'm assuming that everything looked OK for everyone. That's the last meeting that we had. So, so why don't you move the approval of the minutes of the, of, of and name the date of those individually that we need. Okay. To yeah. Um, yeah. I would like to move uh, approval of the minutes for the uh, the special ten six meeting. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second that. Yeah, I, I reviewed that one. Yes. Yeah. All in for all in favor. And I. Opposed abstentions no. so moved next one john uh the next one is the uh, the meeting on 10 27 there was just one one correction that was made by uh, mr john pinto and um and i just uh move forward um move to uh get those minutes uh, approved uh, second 27 second seconds it all in right and the third one is uh, oh, the last meeting which we had on. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, the last one was the meeting we had on uh, 11 17. 
Um, I sent out the minutes. There were no responses, so I'm assuming everyone thought that it was okay. Yeah. So I'd like to forward that uh, approval of the minutes as it stands. Is there a second? I'll second. Jeff Mangles, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Okay, so now, now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay, seeing no objections. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Very much. Hello. What do you have there? Have a happy holiday, everybody. Everyone, you Thank too. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy, happy New holiday, Year, yes. everyone. Happy Christmas. Holidays. Happy holidays. Have a good one. Happy year. Yeah, happy and holidays to everyone. Please, everyone, get back to Michelle tomorrow, please, on the on the proposed uh, submission to the city budget. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. Okay. Have a good night. Thank Very you. Good. Thanks. Take care. Bye everyone.